us begin 540 in your hymnals, All Your Anxiety, page 540. Let's all stand, shall we? Page 540. second now. No other I'm glad y'all made it. We're going <laughs> to look at some time tonight. So let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Lord, I do thank you for the time you've given us to come to church, to hear God's word. And Lord, we pray that you would open up our hearts, open up our minds so that we could fall in love with Jesus Christ. So as we live our life in this world, we can do more to bring glory to you. Thank you, Lord. Help us now as we go through the rest of this night. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Page 541, all for Jesus. Page 541.
if the ushers will come forward. <clears throat> Nursing home went well. We, uh, I don't know, there must have been five or six that were there. We started singing and five or six came down, so we had a good group. We had awesome piano players, <laughs> and uh, we had a good time. You have to join us sometime. Jonathan, you want to? Dear Lord and Savior, we do thank you for bringing us here tonight. We do say a special prayer for Pastor and his family as they're um, going through this hard time with so many funerals in their life right now. And we do pray for their family, and we do ask that you would help them to get away and help them to uh, get to Florida and relax, Lord. And, um, we do pray that you would put their mind at ease. We also pray for Fred tonight as he brings us the word, Lord. We pray that you would fill them with your spirit's power and um, just let the words flow freely, Lord. Thank you for allowing us to give to you and to give to your ministry. And uh, we pray that you would be pleased in our giving and that you would bless us for it. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>
Thank you, Bart. Page 542 in your hymnals, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus, 542. Let's all stand, shall we?
life is worth the living just because he lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. And life is worth the living just because he lives. Well, turn in your Bibles to 2 Kings chapter 20. Time to find out what all these clocks are about. I was reading, again, we all read books, and I was reading one, and, and the golden, golden nuggets that I got out of this book use the analogy of the clocks compared to our Christian lives. And <laughs> it was good, <laughs> so good that you get to hear about it. Second Kings chapter 20, we're going to read the first 11 verses. It says, In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death, and the prophet Isaiah the son of Amos came to him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Then he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth, and in a perfect heart, and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. And it came to pass, afore Isaiah was gone out of the middle court, that the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Turn again, and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee, and on the third day thou shalt go up unto the house of the Lord. And I will add unto thy days fifteen years. And I will deliver thee in this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria. And I will defend this city for mine own sake and for my servant David's sake. And Isaiah said, Take a lump of figs. And they took and laid it on the boil. And he recovered. And Hezekiah said unto Isaiah, What shall be the sign that the Lord will heal me, and that I shall go up into the house of the Lord the third day. And Isaiah said, This sign shalt, the, shalt thou have of the Lord, that the Lord will do this thing that he has spoken. Shall the shadow go forward ten degrees, or go back ten degrees? And Hezekiah answered, It is a light thing for the shadow to go down ten degrees, nay, but... Let the shadow return backward ten degrees. And Isaiah the prophet cried unto the Lord, and he brought the shadow ten degrees backward by which it had gone down in the dial of Ahaz. And so that ten degrees, from what I read, there was a set of steps back in the days, and the way the sun was shining on those steps, they could tell the time, or they knew what time it was. And so he turned back time. And so... Isaiah told Hezekiah to get his house in order. And so we need to get our life in order for God. And so the clocks, we're going to clean our clocks today. So let's pray. Lord, I thank you for the time that you've given us to, again, hear the word of God. And Lord, help us. Help us to clean our lives out. Help us to be more like you. We're all different in shapes and sizes and attitudes, but we all have one thing in common, and that's you. Lord, help us to love you. Help us to love you even more than what we do. Thank you, Lord. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. The hands on the clock, do we want them to go forward or backward? Hezekiah was told, set thine house in order. 
And as Christians, we need to clean our clocks. You know, we, we know the story, we read about it, and, and Hezekiah was given 15 more years. I mean, what would we do if God said, <laughs> Pastor Ruley came to our house when we were sick, and he says, get your house in order, you're going to die. And then we pray to the Lord, and we say, Lord, you know what I've been doing for you, you know I've been working for you, you know I've been witnessing for you. And before Pastor leaves the front door, he comes back because the word of the Lord said, go back and and tell him that he has 15 more years. What would we do? How would we live it different? God is our regulator in life. A room full of clocks. And I made sure that not one of them had the right time. Or had the same time. God regulates us. The clock that is right is because it's been regulated. It's because it's been checked. It's because it's been cleaned. And it runs like it's supposed to in our life. If it's not regulated by God, we, we're, we're in the world all day long. And we need to pray to the Lord. And we need to repent of the sin that we have. As long as we're in this fleshly body... <laughs> We're not going to be perfect, even though sometimes I think I am. <laughs> I'm not. And so we need to be regulated by God. And so with, with the examples, I have scripture, I'm going to be talking about the clocks, and I'm going to be talking about our Christian lives. I'm going to be going back and forth as I read the scriptures. It's either going to be about the clocks, or it's going to be about our Christian life. And our regulator, is it God? Is God our regulator in life? The examples I have, the first one. Have you, have we been wound without being properly set? And if we are, we're of no use. And the idea, has the battery been installed in the clock? Because if you buy a clock and you hang it on the wall and you never put a battery in it, or if you put a battery in it and you never set the right time, it's of no use. And as we live our life, do we have that solid foundation of what God teaches us? So much, and again, we hear this all the time. And, and when I was saved, I always heard, Pastor, come to church, come to church, come to church. Come to church, come to church. And I always I sit in the pew going, I come to church, I come to church, I come to church, I come to church. But so much more in our day, people just want to come once or, or once a month. And it's, we need to come to church. And, and so when pastor's up here going, come to church, come to church, I'm sitting in my pew going, yes, come to church, yes, come to church. Because we need it. We're out in that world so much that we need to come in here and get our clocks cleaned. We need to get that sin out of our life. Church. And, and we hear the music, the dress, the habits that we, we get into. And sometimes it collects on us without us even knowing about it. Because the, the workplace that we're in, the people that we're around, the people that we work with, the people that we see, it rubs off on us if we're not careful. There's a difference. There should be a difference from the Christians to the world. 1 Timothy 6.19 it says, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come, that they may lay hold on eternal life. And verse 20 starts out, O oh, Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust. When we got saved, God entrusted His word to us. Do we keep it? 2 Timothy 2.19, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having the seal. The Lord knoweth them that are His, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Man, there's always that choice of, of right and wrong. There's always that choice of doing what we know to do that is right and, and not doing it. And, man, if, 
We've been in this church long enough to know what's right and wrong. We read the scriptures, we know what God wants in our lives, and, and still we're, why did I do that? I do that too often. I need to make the right decision and go and, and stand right, stand sure. God is my Savior. What's man going to do to me that God doesn't know about? And sometimes we forget those things. In 2 Timothy 1.12, in the middle of that verse, it says, For I know whom I have believed. And so is, is God, are we allowing God to regulate our life? If we don't, we're of no use. We're like the clock that never keeps the right time. We adjust it, we adjust it, we adjust it, and finally we just throw that thing out. And so we need God to regulate our lives. Second, there, there are clocks that, that run too fast or they run too slow and we're always adjusting them. We lose our usefulness. We, we lose our joy because we're running too slow or we're running too fast. Hebrews 10.25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. And again, it's come to church. I'm around the unsaved all the time. This is my family. I like to be here. I like to be here. This is my family. Sometimes families don't get along. <laughs> and that's because we're all different, but we're all knit together. And so we all go through problems, and sometimes when I hear yours, I'm glad I have mine. But we come to church to be with one another. Our preacher spends hours talking with God and bringing us the Word of God so we can grow, so we can get our clocks cleaned and go out there and, and live a life for Christ. And when the devil beats us down, we come back again and he cleans our clocks and we go back out there to fight the battle, to make a difference for the Lord. When we run too fast, we forget about that old-time religion and we get caught up in everything, always looking for something new. In 2 Peter 1, 20 and 21, it says, Knowing this first, that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. 2 Peter 3, 17, it says, Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware, lest ye also be led away with the air of the wicked, and fall from your own steadfastness, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To Him be glory forever and ever. And so we, we always want something new, bigger and better. Just do more for the Lord. Just do more for the Lord. We're always looking for something different, a, a new way of doing it. And I don't know if, if that's the, the world that has gotten into our, our minds and in our thought process because we always have to do better. You know, I always think of that salesman that if he sold 10 cars, he needs to sell 15. And if he sold 15, he needs to sell 20. What happens? I've sold 100. Now you want me to sell 150. Now I sold 150. Now you want me to sell 200. Where does it end? And then as a Christian, how about if we hand out one track, we hand out two. If we hand out five tracks, we hand out ten. There's the bigger and better. There's the more and more. But it's not going to be anything different. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we're always looking for, for something new, something that the Bible doesn't say. It's not out there. It's right here. It's right here. If we run too fast and, and try to regulate our own life and not let God regulate our life, we're of no use for Christ. It seems like there's too many Christians out there, Christians, regulating their own life. I don't know if you work with them, but some of the jobs that I've been on, when they hear that I go to church, they go, oh, you're just like 
And then I find out what they're like. And I'm like, oh, I'm nothing like them. You know, I don't sit there and, and talk to God and get messages from God and go around and tell everybody what God just told me. I don't know where they're at, but that's not what the God of the Bible teaches us. And it's not long where they differentiate. You're not like him. You are different. And we should be different. We should be different. Because if we're, if we're letting God regulate our lives, we're going to be different. There's, we're living God's lifestyle. We're not living the world's lifestyle. And sometimes we want to fit in. Sometimes we try so hard to fit in and still keep this lifestyle. There's, there's a line of separation. We're going to be with them. We're going to be witnessing to them. But our lifestyle is completely different from the world's lifestyle. And sometimes we just want it to mesh. It's not going to mesh. If so, we're going to be like these clocks that are going to be all out of whack. And when they're not running right, we just get rid of them. And so we need God to regulate our life. Another one, I didn't bring this example. It talks about the case. And, and usually when you buy the wristwatch, you know, you have a, a fancy case. Well, maybe I got a fancy box there or a fancy cover there. And we buy the clock because of the looks, <laughs> You know, that doesn't keep time, but I like the looks. And, so, and sometimes if the Christian has the look, but nothing else, what good is it? By appearance, it's at the top, but by trustworthiness, it's still going to be thrown in the trash. James 1.8, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. 122, be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. So many times we, we look at people and, it's, and, and, and the looks are there, but the works aren't there. And, and they go together. And so much we see that. In James 2.20, but wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? If we just have the case, if I, if I just keep the box and there's nothing that works on the inside, what do you keep it for? And sometimes we think it looks great and then all of a sudden our, our nieces and nephews come on over or your kids that are growing up and, and they, Dad, what do you keep that thing for? It doesn't even keep the right time. I like the way it looks. <laughs> if it's a clock, it's supposed to keep the right time. If we're a Christian, supposed to let God regulate our lives. We're supposed to let God regulate our lives. The case is the external life. The works is the spiritual life with God. Is He our regulator? These two need to go together. So our life with Christ is right. 2 Corinthians 6.14 Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And we know these verses. And we try to justify ourselves. When we, but they're a great friend. They live a good life. But they're not saved. You're, you're wrong English here. But your bestest, best friend friend better be saved because we never draw the the worst up to the best the worst always draw the best down it never fails second corinthians 7 1 having therefore these promises dearly beloved let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and the spirit perfecting holiness in the fear of God. We need to keep ourselves clean. We need to keep God as our regulator or we're going to be like these clocks that all have different times and not, they're worthless if they don't have the right time. 
1 Corinthians 16, 20, For ye are bought with the price, therefore, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. And we know these things. I know these things. So why do I struggle with them? Why do you struggle with them? Because I want to regulate my own life. And God says, no, I want to regulate your own life. And if I'd be on my knees praying more, I'd allow God to regulate my life. And so the things that God tells us to do, if we don't do them, we, we get out of this lifestyle of, of what we know. We, we read the Bible, we know the verses. And then we face it in life and it's like, we forget about this. And we, uh, I just love this. It could go to be food. You know, we, we talk about the, the no drink and the no smoking and all that other stuff, but there are times I hate going to buffets because all the people at buffets are fat. <laughs> and I don't want to be like that. So sometimes I'm sitting at the buffet and I get a plate full and it's like, oh. I go, what'd you do that for? <laughs> I like it. <laughs> you know, I wanted to try a little bit of everything. Well, if you keep doing that, you're going to end up the way you don't want to be. And so I'm in this lifestyle instead of thinking this lifestyle. And we get caught up, and, and that's because I'm regulating my life. Lord, this is what I want to eat, and this is what I'm going to eat. It's kind of like the Lord going, okay, you're going to get like this then. And then you're going to look at me and go, why can't I lose the weight? Well, stay out of some of those places. And we, we battle that. But if we let God be the regulator of our lives, we'll work at living this lifestyle. And the only reason we're different from the world is because we're letting God regulate our life. And that's what we want as Christians. That's what we want as being saved. The case and the works, the flesh and the spirit. We need to keep our house in order. And we need to let God be the regulator of that. And we'll be better. The next example, these clocks like us, were judged by the hands. If the hands aren't right, <laughs> something's wrong. What the lips say, the silent life should say. What the public life regulates, the private life should regulate. If the hands are wrong, the fixing takes place inside. If something's wrong, the fixing takes place inside of us. Isaiah 64, 6. But we are as an unclean thing, and all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. And we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken away. The Jeremiah 17, 9, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? And we know those. And so much we need God to regulate our lives so we have a lifestyle over here instead of, instead of trying to mesh this lifestyle of the world in it. The Romans 12, 1 and 2, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto the Lord. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of the mind. What we think. Do we think about living a lifestyle for God? Or is the mind still here? I know what I should do, but I like this. And the renewing of our mind, that we may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Are we letting God regulate our lives so we can live like we should? Jeremiah 17, 10, I the Lord search the heart, I try the reins. And so we need God to to regulate our lives so the hands stay right. We change the battery, we return the hand so the clock is right. 
because that's what we have it there for. And if we need fixing, we go to God. Because God regulates our life. There are clocks that are faithful when unseen. You leave a room, you go on vacation, it's in a spare room, it keeps on ticking. Our clock back there on the wall, when we're not here, it keeps on ticking when we come the next day or when we come on, it's still ticking. Keeping the right time. Christians that are faithful when not, not seen. On Sunday, they're, they're Christians, but on Monday through Saturday, they're Christians. They're the same, their lifestyle is for God. They realize the daylight will reveal the midnight secrets, so they allow God to regulate their lives. They realize the silent betrayal will eventually speak out, so they let God regulate their lives. These faithful Christians keep holy things holy. And again, as I thought about this, God wants us to hold a higher standard. And sometimes it's sad because when there's a Christian holding a higher standard, we Christians want to bring them down because we don't want to live that higher standard. And that's wrong. Because if our lifestyle is for God, we should be holding a higher lifestyle. The Leviticus chapter 10 Verses 9 and 10, as God's talking with Aaron, Do not drink wine nor strong drink, thou nor thy sons with thee, when ye go into the tabernacle of the congregation, lest ye die. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations. And again, he's talking about the priesthood. And sometimes we think, well, that's them, but didn't God make us priests also? And that ye may put difference between holy and unholy, and between unclean and clean. If we don't live this lifestyle for God, if we don't allow God to be the regulator of our life, how's the world ever going to see a difference between holy and unholy, and unclean and clean? We have too many people out there mixing them together, and they don't know what they're looking at. I read a statement in a book, and it said, if we would keep holy things holy, we would close nine out of ten of the devil's businesses out there. Christians that are faithful when unseen. Clocks that work all the time. The other example is the clock that runs on its face. In any other position, it just stops. No matter where you put it, no matter where you hang it, no matter what kind of battery you put in it, if it's not laying on its face, it just doesn't work. And I laugh at that because where I work at, we're by those power lines out there. And honest to God, if the clock doesn't work on this wall, I will take it and I will put it on this wall and it'll work. Okay? I don't know if it's the electric electricity that's in those wires the way our building is I don't know but I can take a clock from this wall to that wall and it'll work just fine no battery changes no nothing change this wall to that wall it works I don't know why and I thought wow but that's that's some Christians they only run in one position they're only here on Sunday mornings they're only here if it's a meal they're only here if it's a missionary that's coming in they only do one thing. If the clock runs on its face, <laughs> it's, it's a goner. Matthew chapter 7, verses 20. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Have we not cast out devils in thy name? In thy name done many wonderful works. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. People come to church all the time. People come to the meals. People come to see missionaries. But is there, 
is, is this their life? Are they, are they regulated by God? Or do they regulate their life and they just do what they want to do? It's the heart thing. We need to know for sure that we're saved. <clears throat> you know, salvation's really pretty simple. It's by faith. Knowing that we're a sinner. Knowing that Christ died for our sins. And that by faith we ask Him to forgive us of our sin. And we accept Him as our Savior. Really pretty simple. But we that are on this side of it, we know that it's simple. But they that aren't, I don't know whether they're scared to death. I was talking with our teens this morning, and we were using the by faith as an illustration. Again, I grew up Catholic, and as far as I knew, Catholic was the right church, and all you people were going to die and go to hell. Because if you weren't Catholic, that's it. And, and I don't know if it was said or stated, but if I walked into another church, I would die. And I had a friend that got saved. And he was getting baptized as the new believer in Christ. And he was an older man to me when that happened. And I went to see him, and I went to the Baptist church, and I was telling them, as I walked into that church, I stood on the outside of those doors, and I went... Because I didn't know. I didn't know. And, and we, had our, <laughs> we had our little baby with us. And they says, we can take your baby to the nursery. <laughs> and I said, you're not touching my baby. Because if you touch my baby, I'll never see her again. Because I've never been into a born-again Bible-believing church. On the outside, that's all I knew. You people were dangerous. I gave you my child, I'd never see it again. And it's nothing like that. And so salvation is simple. I realized I was a sinner and I trusted God as my Savior. Jesus Christ died for my sins. And God regulates my life. There's a difference now. There's a difference now. For sure, are you born again? For sure, are you trusting Jesus Christ alone for salvation? Then let God be the regulator of our life. The world's never going to like it. Never, never, ever, ever going to like it. As, as believers, we need to understand that. We just need to know that. They're, they're never, ever, ever going to understand us until they get desperate and they want an answer. And then they'll come to us. But till then, we can't mix them. We can't let God regulate our life and us regulate our life because then all we're doing is confusing them. We look like these clocks that are all on a different time. None of them seems to be together and and that's what happens when we don't realize we're in a different lifestyle we're saved we're born again god is our father we know god the creator of heaven and earth we're not perfect we're never going to be perfect if you think we're perfect if you think you're perfect we'll talk to the people that know you and we'll find out that you're not perfect okay i think i'm perfect sometimes but just ask my family they'll tell you that i'm not but we live a different lifestyle. We just need to realize that. God needs to be our, our regulator so that we can live differently than the world. And when they get desperate and they want answers and they have nowhere else to turn to, they'll look us up. They'll find us. But God needs to be the regulator of our life. Another, the most important part of the clock. All of it. All of it. The most important part of the clock is all of it. We've heard the Romans 12, 1 and 2 about being conformed, not being conformed to this world, but being transformed by the renewing of our mind. 
But verses 3, 4, and 5 says, For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. For we, for as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another. Ephesians 4.16 For whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part making increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. We're all fit together. Somebody's the hand. Somebody's the left, right. Somebody's the right hand. Somebody's the left hand. Somebody's the right foot. Somebody's the left foot. Somebody's the eye. Somebody's the ear. We're all fit together. And it's not just, it's not just talking about bone to bone. It's talking about all the ligaments, all the muscles, everything that's there. We're all fit together. Not everyone's called to be the pastor. Our pastor's called to be the pastor, and we're not to take his spot. We're not even to think about taking the spot unless God's called us. But you all have different offices. We all have different things that we do in the church, but we edify the whole. If the left hand wanted to do what the right hand wanted to do, you'd be awkward. Get out of here. I want to do it. And sometimes that's what the church does, and we need God to regulate our lives. So I do what God wants me to do. You do what God wants you to do. You do what God wants you to do. We all let God regulate our lives. We're all fit together. All the muscles, all the ligaments fitting together, working together to edify God. Not one clock saying this, one clock saying that, one clock saying this, one clock saying that. They're all different. They're all so confusing. But when we let God regulate our lives and know that we live a lifestyle for God, we're all going to fit together. God's going to mold us together. We all do different things, but it's all for the edifying of God. We're all needed. A new word that I found out or that I read about. Let none of us be the broken cog. C-O-G. Perfect clock. If you know the insides of of the clock, the clock is one of those little wheels. Not the wheel, just the little chip in there. If one of those chips is broken, it affects the whole clock. The, there it is, the tooth on the wheel. If we have one sin in our life, one unconfessed sin in our life, it hurts the whole body. We're all important to the church. We're all important to God. And so we need to live that lifestyle for God. We need to let God be the regulator of our lives because we're all needed. We're all fit together. We all work together to glorify God. But if there's one broken wheel, if there's one sin in our life that we've not confessed, it hurts the whole body. And and sometimes we want to, I don't know, we want things in the world, but we want to kind of bring the world over to this lifestyle. And there's a line. The world's lifestyle should never be in God's lifestyle. And man, so much we want it to, I don't know, we want it to blend together. We, 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 we like some of the things over here. And, and, you know, God's given us everything. But we need to pick and choose what we do. We need to pick and choose so it's right and not wrong. It's best rather than just better. Not because we're better than everyone else, it's because we're letting God regulate our lives. And, and again, you know, we all have our stories, so I'm up here, so I get to tell you mine. 
you know, the, some of the gas stations that I go to if I'm traveling or whatever and then I stop at and, and some of the gas stations when I was traveling a lot and the regular routes that I would take, some of them had good coffee and I loved it and all of a sudden they changed hands and it didn't, you know, it wasn't service station anymore up there. All of a sudden it had cigarettes, booze and lottery. And I just felt funny going in there. I just wanted gas and I just wanted coffee because they had good coffee. But because they changed the sign, the lettering, as the Christian, I just felt funny walking in there and buying my coffee. And so I changed gas stations because I didn't want to walk in it. It's just a gas station. I know. It's just a gas station. But I didn't want to walk in there. I picked a different one that didn't have cigarettes, booze, and lottery. It just had gas. It's just, it's that broken cog. One little spoke. One little tooth. That line of separation. Anything wrong with that as a gas station? No. But I just wanted to live a little higher lifestyle for God. Any better than you? No. I just wanted God to regulate my life. And so, you know, even when you go to the grocery store, it's hard now. Do you walk around the booze aisle? You know, and that's getting tougher because they're putting them everywhere. I mean, you have to go this way for the water, but you have to look that way for the water because this way is the wine. You know, so I'm looking like this, and then I'm looking to see if anybody's around. The pastor's going to be at the other aisle going, what are you looking at? I'm just getting water, Pastor, just getting water. You know, but it, it's this lifestyle that I want to work at. God being our regulator. Don't be the broken cog in the body of Christ. We're all fit together to strengthen one another, to do our part for Christ. And it's us letting God be the regulator of our life. The clock that needs to be warmed up. <laughs> it only works in warm weather, not in cold weather. <laughs> you know, they're at church when it's warm. They're not at church when it's raining or snowing. Oh. They're there when it's a special event, but when it's just church, they're not there. Is God regulating that life? Is he regulating our life? I don't know. When we get saved, church is just something we do. So we can hear the word of God. So we can let pastor preach to us. So we can let that penetrate our life. So we can keep this lifestyle. We're out there all week long dealing with this lifestyle. And we need church. <laughs> you need to be at church. You need to be at church. So we, can let, so we can let pastor preach to us and tell us about this lifestyle and live this lifestyle and let God be the regulator of our life. So much we miss. And, and again, that James, a double-minded man, is unstable in all his ways. We need to be doers and not hearers only. There are a lot of people out there that know more about Scripture than I do, more about Scripture than you do. Where are they at church? Where are they? Where are they in the pews? They have it memorized. They know all the stories. They, they know all the Scripture. And you go, why don't you come to church with me? Who's regulating that life? Who's regulating that life? That's not the life for us to look at because they know more, because they memorize more. If they're over here and they're not over here, we're not to look at them. There's that line of division. We need to let God be the regulator of our life so we can keep going. And, and, 
and live this lifestyle. Do what God wants us to do. Then there's that clock that's always loyal. Even though no one hears it, it keeps on ticking. Even though no one sees it, it keeps on ticking. It ticks precisely. The Christians that live like God wants them to live, they're out there. They live honestly. They live purely. That's what God wants for us, just to live that honest, pure life. We don't, we don't need this anymore. We don't. We don't need the world anymore because we have God. And we need God to regulate our lives and that renewing of the mind. We know that 2 Corinthians 5, 17, old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. Man, but that old stuff keeps wanting to creep in on us. And we, it, we have a new lifestyle. We have a new lifestyle. And God regulates us. It's the same in the dark and in the light. When no one sees us or when people see us all around, when we're in the church and we're in the world, we're consistent. We're consistent because we want God regulating our lives. It ticks day and night. We live our life day and night. So how's your clock? Is there a broken cog in it? If there's dust and dirt in the clock, it needs to get cleaned out. If we have sin in our life, it needs to be confessed. 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let the master reach down and fix it, pull it out, so we can live this life for God allowing God to be the regulator of our life. When the clock gets fixed, it gets out of the shop and gets hung on a wall. Man, when God fixes us, we get fixed all the time. I know we sin all the time, and we ask God to forgive us all the time, but we don't stay in the shop. We're, we're in the world to shine the light. We don't stay sitting in the church 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. We get our clocks cleaned. And we go out into the world to shine for Christ. We come back to the church to get our clocks cleaned. So we can go back out into the world to shine for Christ. This line of division is always there. And we need God to regulate our lives. God, through the prophet Isaiah, told Hezekiah, Set thine house in order. And he gave him a sign and he used a timepiece. And so let's let God regulate our lives. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for the day. Thank you for, for your word. And the prophet told Hezekiah to get his house in order, get his life in order. And he used the, the timepiece. And so as we, as we look at the clock, all the clocks have different shapes and sizes. But it would be nice if they all had the same time. We as Christians need to let God regulate our lives so we're all on the same time. But we're all going to look different. All shapes, all sizes, all colors, just as these clocks up here, all different sizes. We as Christians who know Jesus Christ is our Savior all need to have the right time. But we're all different parts of the body fit together to strengthen one another, to encourage one another. And so, Lord, help us to let you regulate our lives. Thank you, Lord. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. John, can you come up and lead us in a song? I forgot to ask you before we started.
you did that last time. <laughs> so, Again, as we stand and sing, if there's something that you need to confess, just come up and talk to the Lord. If you're not saved, just make sure you are. Ask God to forgive you of your sins. Accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, and he'll give you a new life. Page 154. us and strengthen us. Lord, as we go out into the world, help us to shine for Christ. Thank you, Lord. Help us to fall in love with Jesus Christ. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.